cool. Oh, are we back on? Brilliant. Um, fab. Um, can I ask Lasatsi to uh, to join us if he's uh, if he's around? Lasatsi, you there? I hope Lasatsi's there. Can you can you hear me? I can. We can hear you. Cool. Do you have a camera? Yeah, yeah. Fantabulous. Brilliant. So yes, the gang is together. Brilliant. So um, I th with this sec section, just thought we'd um, just like reflect on the the film, um, mm -hmm. and also to really ask because this is only on a work. It will work really, really well if. Um, to get people's responses or just their, their their thoughts and some people might have seen this like loads already but even if they've seen it loads it'd be great to kind of get their their responses as well and just thoughts in relation to um uh black lives matter and also into institutional racism but but first um mister i haven't seen you in ages how are you doing yeah i'm all right i'm all right yeah cool so could you just share with those i'm putting you on the spot man but your memories of um, of the production and the development of the film, because you were right there, right at the very beginning. So, so just tell us about, about a bit about that. Um, yeah, uh, I'll start with obviously when you approached me with the kind of concept of the film, um, and I was instantly intrigued by it because I, I I think I could see that it was going to be something important. It was different, and it was something that I wanted to be part of, like literally straight away. Obviously, it was a great opportunity. From the from the beginning, but um, but I think with the story in particular, it was something that I resonated with massively, and I knew that a lot of people would. Um, during the, the the research process of the film, uh, the the few weeks I did the placement with with Trinity Vision, with uh, Don Brady, I mean, we learned a, a lot about the retention gap and and. We didn't realize at the time how bad it actually was, but it wasn't until we did this research that we saw that it is, it's, it is a massive, massive issue. Um, and yeah, it just it just made it feel like what we're working towards was was somewhat worth, like really worth work, like putting everything into. Um, yeah. Can you remember any any was there any bit in that because there was a, it was quite intense. I'm, I'm, yeah. Before I actually get into that, I want to I want to go back. Can you remember when we actually first had that conversation? So it was it was you. There was um, uh, Danique. Yeah. Uh, there was Bright. I can't remember the um, but there was a, there was a, um, there was Mabs, and brought the um, the the the. Um, differential outcomes data to you and it was about some survey data can you remember that that meet that very initial meeting that we that we had that'd be like in 2017 2018 can you remember that at all yeah i still remember that yeah briefly i still remember it briefly i think okay. we're just all talking about our own personal experiences um in university and how that that's affected us but yeah no i definitely remember that that conversation okay. Brilliant. And then when we did the whole Trinity Vision experience and you started off um, working with and doing your own research, was there any kind of really key bits of information that that, that or that you got that you went, wow, OK, you know, because you, you, you went, it was quite broad and quite wide where, where you went. Was there anything that, that really yeah. stood out? I think the main thing that stood out to me was um, when we discovered that the Basically, the, the achievement levels of the students was wasn't it didn't differ from the white students, um, and then we came to the conclusion that it was uh, social and environmental factors that were contributing to them um, leaving university. So when we when we deep dived into that sort of research and found all these different stories of clubs and societies and universities and and, and these things that people were kind of going through that you know you didn't really know about, it was it was really eye opening to see. How many people have to experience that? And uh, yeah, brilliant. Um, now, could you just talk a little bit about your experiences? Because you've graduated, well, you know, you've you've moved on. You're an alumni. Um, so, what was your experience like um, within HE, within university? You know, both good and bad. Yeah, um, I think I had a very. It was positive on some ends, and it was negative on some ends. Um, I think one thing that I was looking for, lucky to have, I think the 
faculty at Leeds Trinity University was very, very supportive throughout my time at uni, which looking back is, is a massive positive. It's something that, you know, that it's happy to think that at least I was an institution that backed its, backed its students. Um, but yeah, there was there was definitely a, a lot of, of low points. There was definitely a lot of learning uh, that, that that took place outside of the the university. Um, I mean, even with regards to like my time in in societies and and things like that. Yeah, there was there was a lot. Of, there was a lot of different things. I mean, there's a lot of different like moments I could speak of. I don't really know which one to to kind okay. of. Start. Okay. Okay. And Black Lives Matter and the whole George Floyd thing. Yeah. That, that was that's last year. So um, you weren't at, at uni at that at that point. Right. So you know your take on on the whole movement. And um, did did you watch the video? What, yeah. What, yeah. And what what are your kind of your takeaway from the whole from the whole thing? Well, I mean, so I'm I'm South African. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm South African and my parents uh, grew up in South Africa um, during the apartheid kind of era. So growing up, I was always told about how it was and I've always been educated on it. I've been to museums and I've, I've seen videos and all this stuff. Um, so for me, seeing, seeing that video and seeing all the other videos, you know, it's... sorry, I'm getting a bit. Emotional, but it's, it's. I think the hardest thing for me is that, as a society, it feels like we have begun to accept that that culture and that nature, and, and we've begun to accept that you are going to see this video of, of a black man being murdered by the police, and and it's just going to go viral. And the sense, there's no sensitivity there. There's there's no safeguarding for the person's family. The person's matter. The, the person's life in that moment doesn't really matter. It's just another video online. And for me, that I find that so so pervasive, emotionally scarring for a lot of people. I mean, p personally, I think that how do how do I put this? It does affect me deeply on an emotional level. But if I said it. People like my sister cannot even sit and watch those videos. She can't, she doesn't want anything to do with them, you know. And and it, it feels like a lot of people have gone to a point where they've really, really had enough of it. Um yeah, so for me, I feel like the the, the movement is so important, but it feels like a continuation of a fight that has been going on for, for a very, very, very long time. It just feels like it's my generation's turn now to to have our fight. Brilliant. OK, uh, Syra, I'd like to bring you in just just on, on, on that point. Um, Black Lives Matter, what, what does it mean to to you and, and the George Floyd video? You know. I haven't seen the video. Um, I wouldn't be able to watch it. Um, and the 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 fact of the matter is that George Floyd is one of so many black people who've been killed at the hands of police or black people who've been killed by other authorities or other people within our society and community. Um, for me, the Black Lives Matter movement is um, is of significant importance if we want to bring about any kind of change. And um, <clears throat> I'm really tired of people making statements saying things such as all lives matter um, and just pushing the significance of black people um back to the bottom to the bottom of priorities really when people say that um we know working in higher education that the black experience for students and for staff is um significantly more negative um and um you know our students and staff um, of black backgrounds experience far more problems and not because um, of their academic abilities or their professional credibility, but because of external factors. Um, and so we have a huge responsibility at university within higher education and beyond um, to make sure that the voices of our black students, of our black staff are heard and that they are responded to and they're responded to with clear defined actions. Um, so 
we we have these talking spaces such as today's event and many other events um and but they it's a continual conversation that takes place um and it's a continual um system of actions that we put into place um to respond um so that would be my you know small contribution at this point uh, to say and i just wanted to say rick that um you know, you, you you speak so humbly of your film um, and I really, um, you know, want to shout out about it and about your achievements because it, it your film is incredibly innovative. It's incredibly inspiring. Um, it's very creative. It's different. It completely differs from the mainstream forms of training um, that, you know, organisations or higher education institutions do around um, you know, unconscious bias, for example, or race equality. Um, so, you know, it's and it's just a credit to you, really, in terms of your um, knowledge and expertise and everything that you've put into it. And alumni and students like the Satsi and all other students who've contributed to the creation of your film. We just want to celebrate um, your success here. So, you know, you, you mustn't be um, so humble about your achievements um, in this area and what you've done for LTU as an institution. Uh, what you've done for the student voice and for staff uh, voices as well. Uh, so thank you so much for your work and thank you so much to Satsi for your work on this as well. I just wanted to to mention that um, and I'm sure we'll talk about the toolkit as well. So I'll, I'll hand back over to yourselves because I know I can talk a lot. <laughs> no, it's all good. Thank you very much for that. And it is. Um, thank you. The, the environment has absolutely everything to do with it. I have every I, I can't say how much I like I like I mean I don't want to gush but I really like our university very very much I think that um, so inspired by um, the conversation that you had with um, with Macy, Jail, um, Chanel and Rena and Lasatsi massively moved and inspired by what they said and what they had to say and it with it and the chat in in the uh, the chats from everybody was so um so powerful and moving and in, and it felt like a, a real community and it's that community that allowed the film to happen it was just kind of like yeah i'm going to make a film and nobody got in the way and then i showed it to people and to to friends colleagues and everybody's like yeah man that's cool and it feels as though we can do we can do a huge amount. We can do so much. So it's uh, thank you, but you know it, it has everything to do with the environment that 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 that, that I was that I'm in, and you know I I, I intend to as long as uh, as well as my other colleagues. We we intend to do a lot more work and a lot more stuff. So thank you for that. I'd like to um, open this out to um, everyone and, and put people on the spot because we it's all good to listen. Um, and maybe have an answer provided, but when yeah, as um, yourself, um, uh, Charles, uh, Nadra, everybody's saying it, this is um, ongoing work and what we need to talk. And um, so just um, even though you might have seen the film a couple of times, it'd be nice just to to, to share, just to have this as a moment of, of being able to share. And if we can all talk on top of one, on top of everything, that's really cool for me. That's how my workshops kind of go. It's just a, an open space for communication, but just um, just just feedback and thoughts, and then uh, um, hopefully we'll um, take that to build on the to build on the discussion. But just yeah, amongst amongst the colleagues, the community, the family, um, just your, your immediate thoughts or questions or queries or, or what did what what thoughts did it trigger? Well, Rick, you've got a lot of comments in the chat, lots oh, wow. of um, brilliant commentary about how, um, you know, impactful your film is uh, and everyone agreeing that, you know, you mustn't um, minimise or be so humble about your achievements here and your contributions. Um, so many people saying and, and uh, stating those facts. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, so we have yeah, so Dion has mentioned about racial trauma, including Islamophobia, for example, needs to be put into anti-racist statements um, and extenuating circumstances processes. Students aren't always uh, to document these experiences with evidence. That's a really, really interesting point, actually. Um, so I, I don't know if you wanted to say anything about that, Rick, or if anybody no, else wants to come in. Yeah, I think if, yeah. 
that I'd, I'd need to sit down and think about that one. But um, is it is it possible for people to to contribute and talk or? Um, yeah, Dion, are you there, Dion Taylor? Would you like to come in? Hey, Dion. Oh, can't hear your microphone. Is mute. It on mute? Yay. Yeah, um, so um, Dr. Dion Taylor from Birmingham City University, really loved the film. Um, I'm, I do work around black student experiences and also um, on the Black Studies programme at um, BCU. But what I found is that the disproportionate amount of black students in particular who experience racial trauma, who experience things around mental health, and it's not always that they can evidence it. Yeah. Uh, and I think I raised a point previously around the intersections. So that's why I mentioned Islamophobia, because you might have a student who is um, a black female Muslim. Like there's yep. so many things at play there. Yep. And it's not always, you know, you can't always pinpoint what that is. So just, you know, getting you to think about, or everybody really, that there's, you know, even though we, and as, as your VC said, um, it's not a uh, black student and the experiences are not a homogeneous um, yep. entity. But how how can we develop responses that are more nuanced? How do we, you know, have um, responses that are um, more fluent in the way that we understand? Because we do know, especially as, as practitioners, as lecturers, as academic professional services, whatever, we, we know how do we put that into action? Yeah, absolutely. Right, I'm going to go now. I wasn't expecting to come on camera. So. No, well, no, I really appreciate it. Thank you. But the point is really important. Thank you. Um, Syri, do you have an immediate response to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely, uh, the, the issue of intersectionality is incredibly important um, in how we respond to the needs of our students. Um, and just understanding the complexities of intersectionality and what that means. So, for example, myself and Rick, we're both in the category of BAME. Um, we're people of colour. Rick's male, I'm female. My experience as, a, as an ethnic female is still going to be different yep. um, to Rick's experience uh, as a male. Um, but he's also a black male. So there's going to be other issues and negative um, you know, associations with that too. Um, and... Uh, you know, so I, I, I completely um, understand, Dion, where you're coming from. And it's about us really kind of honing in, understanding what the needs are of our students and of our staff um, and hearing their lived experiences and what things are like for them on a day to day basis. And then how we can actually go about putting in place actions to address all those individual aspects um, of intersectionality across the university. Um, and we are absolutely committed at LTU to changing the culture um, through systematic actions um, and through visible displays of our commitment. So whether that's something to do with, for, for example, like Rick's film or level six project that I've been involved in this year, which is basically taking people's lived experiences and stories and putting them together in a film, which I've been playing so far to all of our first year students across the whole of the university, final session being tomorrow. Um, and it's really just pinpointing what life is like for students, for students of different backgrounds, of different ethnicities, um, and also considering um, the different experiences across intersectionality. Um, so I've just seen Charles come in there. Charles, are you? Sarah, can I just say uh, thank you? And that question was very, very apt. And that's why in my little talk, I did talk about intersectionality because uh, I've seen where universities don't really, really pay heed to that. I think there are, there are a number of things to be said. We need to value the uniqueness of individuals. Uh, and you heard me talk about the uniqueness of individuals. And that uniqueness speaks to the issue of intersectionality. Um, I, I, I remember uh, my wife coming home, um, a, a black lady, uh, a Christian, working in an environment where we have uh, um, lots of uh, uh, Muslims. And he, she comes in with so many, many histories. At times she feels very low and we need to do what we have to do at home. 
And uh, that lived experience means that we need to treat individuals as individuals, even when you work collectively. And our and our policies, our systems, our processes, the inclusiveness of uh, our environment is, is important. And we do need to have opportunities of allowing individuals to go and speak with people. Are with me? So mentorship is important. Sponsorship is important. Having communities of practice is important so that people can share freely that lived experiences. And when it does go wrong, and at times it, do, it does go wrong, we need to have a system that allows objectivity for that individual's experience to be really, really heard and heard properly with all levels of objectivity. Um, so I think it's a very, very good uh, question. It's a question where there is no one bullet answer to address with, but having processes, having cultures, being able to speak openly, and when people are really, really pushed to the wall, they need to have a place to go and speak openly and for that voice to be heard just as it is. Thank you. I think we've got um, Madeleine. She's got a hand up. Hi. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is a, a question really or more, more of a comment, but I think what was captured really well in, in the film is that sort of discomfort that surrounds when issues of, uh, of racism come up um, and this fear that you're going to be accused of, of being racist um, and I and I think one of the things I, I find kind of difficult with conversations around race is that we don't want to upset people mm -hmm. um, and I think that in in a way we there needs to be a culture around accepting that there is going to be discomfort in these conversations and that is important and that is that is productive um, and you know that these conversations aren't easy conversations um, because a change needs to happen and in order for that change to happen there has to be a, le a level of, of, of discomfort mm -hmm. um, and um, and I, I don't mean that in terms of you know re retelling the trauma so much but actually recognizing that you know we are in a racist society um, and to then kind of thinking about the starting point that, that, that we are coming from which is that we are in a racist society um, institutions are racist um, and we are part of that society so the accusation of of being a racist um, you know and it's sort of like this terrible thing to be called a racist but the reality is we're part of a racist system so yeah. you know um, and I and I, I wonder um, you know about sort of the support that's around being able to have those converse conversations so that they are challenging but in a productive sense so that we can we can sort of move on from that in a in a sort of a positive stance um you know in terms of the dialogues that, that we have um and uh, and and the training and, and things like that um you know we always have this notion of, of safe spaces but yeah. safe for who you yes, know indeed. Yeah. Um, because those spaces you know from a from a, a black perspective in, you know, university spaces aren't safe spaces. So whose safe spaces are we protecting? And quite often it's actually, you know, the people who are already feeling in place and it's like, oh, don't upset them. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's that's kind of my uh, my my sort of comment, really. And I, I think that came out really well in, in, in the film. Um, you know, there was a real opportunity there for the for the teacher to be able to recognise the perspective and the experience of uh, Tapello and instead it was like closing down and it was you know this kind of um reinforcement of of kind of a you know white power really to be honest so yeah so that that's my kind of um, cool thing. if if i may i i think i think the points that you make uh, are absolutely fantastic and and on it um when when thinking about um shirley's perspective because i kind of like i was it was really e it would have been it's really easy to write shirley and the lecturer as somebody who really is it's like racist, you know, mm. she's blinkered. Um, and I think there are a lot of experiences where, and I've kind of witnessed it um, around uh, in other institutions um, that she wouldn't, she's closing that, she'd have the conversation. She'd have the conversation with Tapello, but she's not going to do it in public. Why? Because she's afraid of getting it wrong. Mm. And that, 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 that self, that protectionism, that the way of protecting herself is compounding. She's and she's not aware. If you called her out on it, she'd feel really defensive. But she, mm. 
she's she what she wants to do is she would rather have a quiet conversation with him afterwards in her room in a safe space and then and sort it out and come to an agreement and an understanding not flesh it out in front of everybody and get it wrong and be seen to get it wrong now there was a comment earlier on and i completely relate to this and i feel it from um colleagues who were like i would absolutely hate to think that i've done that um, this was out of the conversations that were happening earlier on this morning. I'd hate to think that I've that I've that I was I've somehow I I I was complicit and I I modelled that inappropriate behaviour. I'd hate to think that. And I kind of there's a part of me which thinks, look, if we could all kind of accept that we all have, you have, you know, let's not kind of be afraid of going. Do you know what? There will be stuff. The stuff that we do. You know, um, and on an intersectional level, the stuff that I have absolutely no aware awareness of, I don't know what it's like to be you. And I will kind of, I might do stuff unintentionally that's really offensive. Um, but I've got to be able to take it that when you say, actually, I'm going to call you on it, that I'm not going to feel victim pressured or wanting my, my feelings protected because you're calling me out for being wrong. The only way that we can get better is is by learning that's what it's bizarre isn't it because we're in a, a, such a place where we're, it's, we're meant to be modeling how to learn but then what we want to do is we want to stick to uh, the way that we've taught you know and then kind of push that out anyway i could go on forever you know mm -hmm. thanks rick i'm just having a look through um other comments that we've had because we've had absolutely loads loads of comments um so um we've had We've had a w one about, so this is a really interesting one about, um, so it's Richard. I don't know if Richard wants to come in on this or you'd like me to um, read it out on your behalf. Richard. Hey, hey Rich. Richard Tavernier, are you there? Oh, how uh, do I talk? So are we able to unmute Richard so that he can come in? Is that Mark? Could you unmute Richard? Yeah. Turn his camera on. Yay. Hi, I'm here. Wow. Uh, I wasn't expecting to come on today. Uh, it's good to see you. Yeah, uh, good to see you. How are you doing? OK. Thank you. Yeah, I think my point really was um, and I think there's some people in today's audience who are possibly sick of me saying this, but I'm going to continue to say this. Um, we, I've, I've, it's so important, you know, what you guys have done today, uh, particularly the students coming on and being brave enough to come on uh, in front of an audience and talk about their experience. Um, and there's real value in that. And, and thank you and all the other participants as well. Um, but I think we need to be aware, uh, particularly as researchers, as academic researchers, that you know we, we talk about trauma. We you know we refer to it as black trauma, um, which is is I hope people understand not in the derogatory sense we're using them terms. Um, but the reality is we've got at least 500 years of evidence in many, many ways, in shapes, anecdotal, whatever, that we can evidence black trauma, the, uh, the black lived experience and negative elements to that. Um, and you could go beyond 500 years, but I'm giving that as a, as, as a framework, yeah, up to today, yeah. And for me, what, what worries me is, again, possibly, next week or the week after we'll do the same piece of research we'll ask the same questions and we'll get the same answers now we need to consider whilst we're doing that we are inflicting trauma yeah now we can argue yeah but it's for the greater good so we can you know create strategies policies yeah uh, I've been involved in black politics for possibly 40 years. I would argue all my life, actually, yeah, um, which was inflicted on me. So I don't need to sit with my students anymore to ask them, them questions about their lived experience. 
I think what we need to be doing is two things. Is when we're approaching our students of colour, um, and a lot of the work is done with our black students as, a, as opposed to other ethnic groups as well, for, for particular reasons, yeah, is to start the conversation where, look, there's no trauma today because we know. But what we would like you to be involved in is thinking about change, yeah? So we've acknowledged the issue. We want you to be part of change and thinking about change. So that's what that's one thing. My second thing is, uh, and uh, I was uh, the race closing the race at ethnicity gap awarding gap last year uh, last week conference, and I said it there that throughout that two day conference, I was hearing about uh, white fragility. Yeah, no one used the term white trauma, but essentially it was getting close to that. Yeah, but everyone seemed uh, to ignore black trauma. Yeah, but they're focusing on this white fragility. Yeah, now for me, I ain't doing no more groups for my students of colour to traumatise them. Yeah. What I'm doing is working with my white students to ask them, what's your experience of race and discrimination? Yeah, and lack of privilege and not getting a first because it's a God given gift to you. Yeah. Ask white students and white staff about their experiences. Yeah. That's where the gap is. You know, we have black knowledge and experience. We need to talk to white, ask them why are they not having the same experience? Because that's where your answer is. And that's where the answer is to actually write impactful strategies and policies. Sorry, I went on one then. Not at all. Can I, can I ju ju just, uh, what, what do you think about, because my, my, I, I totally agree. And in, it's in making, I didn't want to make a film for me in the way in, in filmic terms. I don't, it would have been a lot easier to create a situation where somebody's being brutalized. And I think a lot of films where we that, that you watch um, black characters are being brutalized so that it makes it a lot easier for an audience to recognize that the that the brute that that person is is the antagonist and we can easily develop a kind of a, a relationship and a, and a sympathy and empathy with the victim it's, it's, it's you just do it very visually it's very very quick um but as a, as a maker i don't want to kind of get liddell and and have him kind of okay could, could we do it again please somebody throw in an n-word no uh, a bit distorted could you do it again please yeah, and yeah. it's just kind of it doesn't make any sense to me but point being, um, the, it feels as though sometimes that even though, in, well, we are, we're in the 21st century and there is all of this evidence and this experience, but still people don't get it. They, yeah, so they're kind of <laughs> in an interview or in a meeting, it'll be like, yeah, but yeah, but, but Rick, how, how can you be sure? And it's like, well, okay, so now I have to open my box, the box up and start kind of evidencing justifying yeah. you know my trauma so I, it, it's how can you how can you then navigate how can you close that so if people aren't aren't, aren't prepared to accept it, that it exists but for I, you ricardo i'm sorry i should have started fantastic film really enjoyed it i'd like a copy of that to show my students um but i think what it is ricardo and possibly everyone is that we keep showing them the other we're continually showing them the other. So white can sit back and be entertained because like white likes being entertained like that, yeah? Where the shift will come, where you don't show the other, you show them. You show them, because that's when reflection, and yes, it's uncomfortable, yeah, people get angry, oh God, don't shine the light on me. But show them. Just make, it, it, you know, if you really think about it, yeah, that's quite simple, isn't it? To work out, hang on, they've seen the other for over 500 years and nothing's working. 
Right then, let's try a new way. Show them. And that's when you'll see the change. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, but that's when you see the change. Absolutely agree with you, Richard. Um, I, sorry, Rick, I hope you don't mind me just coming in here because I know we're, I'm really conscious of the time because we don't have very much long left now, but it, and it's actually quite good timing because, Richard, you're absolutely spot on there. Um, and, you know, it's my, so myself and Rick, we deliver Rick's film and the aftermath debate, we call it, which is a toolkit training package that we deliver to higher education Optimal. institutions. Thank yeah, thank you, Richard. Um, thank you, Rich. And, and basically that that whole package and that training toolkit is about pushing people into that conversation space about reflection, self-reflection as individuals and about them coming together to take actions. And it's that call to action. So the whole the whole structure of the toolkit package is really about making sure that people who people are not of colour, so white people in that group, in that space, are pushed into a conversation. They're pushed into the realities that are there in front of them and they're pushed into discussing and talking, but the safe, uh, the space is safe for people to talk and share. And that's what's really, really important. So it does, um, you know, from our perspective, address the things that you pointed out there, Richard, absolutely. Um, I'm really conscious of time because we, we yeah. have sort of run out, but just wanted to come to one other person um, who is Sean. Sean, are you there? Um, you've got a point, I believe, in the chat or a question that's been pointed out to me um, that you would like to share. Do you, could, are you able to come in uh, very quickly and share? I don't know if Mark can find Sean and unmute. Hey. Hi, Sean. Hey, Sean. Hello, how are you guys? Good, good. Thank you. Um, I, can I just quickly say firstly, um, thank you very much, Ricardo, for making such a wonderful movie that actually um, captures most of the things that um, actually uh, Black people experience. Um, and thank you very much to the organizers. It's, uh, it has been a very insightful um, discussion. Um, I, I just wanted to quickly make one point and then um, end off with a question. Um, for me, the way that I, I sort of like understand the whole issue of race and racism is that um, no one is born a racist, just like no one is born a sexist um, and things like that. So these things, they are actually learned. Um, they are acquired characteristics and eventually they form um, part of um, someone's belief system. So if they are actually learned, then this means that it is actually possible to unlearn um, these things that we've learned. So um, one of the questions that I have is that, how do we actually teach one another in terms of moving away from having this sort of perspective that if one person calls another person a racist, then they immediately think that they are calling them a bird person. So in other words, my question is, how do we help people distinguish between you committing a racist act and then you thinking that I'm calling you a bad person? Because I think that's one of the problems. Immediately when you say someone has said or done something racist, they think that you're calling them a bad person. Thank you very much. No, thank you, Sean. Um, Syrah, <laughs> your immediate thoughts. I need to meditate on it. I, yeah, I mean, it's you're absolutely right, Sean, that we're not born with those um, prejudices or those, um, you know, racist views. Um, and it is, you know, very much going to be all of our responsibilities as individuals, you know, to try and change those perspectives. Um, and, you know, I, and I speak from being a, an academic in higher education, that it is my duty. It's my duty to um to educate, to share, um, to make sure the truths and realities for people of colour are brought to the forefront, that they're listened, they're heard and they're responded to. And it's my duty and my obligation to take action. 
uh, and I'm absolutely fully committed to this, you know, at LTU. Um, and 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 the other thing, and we do we do talk about this myself and Rick in our training package that there isn't any room for white fragility, and there isn't any room for people curling up and um, not wanting to take accountability for their own part and role to play in tackling racism, whether it's in higher education and it's everywhere. Um, so, you know, people in these safe debating spaces, they need to be um, open minded. They need to hear. They need to feel those uncomfortable um, and those very painful experiences and realities um, that are, you know, an everyday thing for people of colour, whether you're a student or whether you're a staff. Um, so, yeah, there will be many people who are fragile um, and, 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 you know, they feel very defensive, but there is there's no room for that, you know, and we've moved. We, we have to move past all of that now because we've done lots and lots of talking um, and it's about taking action now. And, and even just to kind of recap on um, Richard's point earlier. Um, you know, people have shared their stories. People have watched these horrific videos, you know, um, so we know what the realities of what's going on. Um, and, you know, when we heard our students today speaking, people were so upset by what they've heard because, you know, you're hearing their trauma and it's so raw and real. But that is the reality of what's going on. So we can't shy away from an, any of that and we can't be fragile about that. We, we have to take accountability as individuals. Um, and come together um, to tackle racism. So uh, that would be my point. And I'm sorry, I probably talked quite a bit there. Um, but Rick, was there anything you wanted to say well, before just I wrap things I, up? I think you, you you said it really eloquently and just brilliantly. I just see it as um, you know, it's self self awareness is your own personal development. You know, and there's this kind of like movement called you know against people. Um, you know, being aware, calling it woke, wokeism or whatever you, you know, I, 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 you, well, I, aren't we here to learn, you know, and, and improve? So it's, um, you know, becoming aware of others and other people's uh, needs, you know, I think it's, it's, it's not only good, but it's your own personal development, you know, that's how I see it. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Rick. Um, thank you so much for sharing your film again with us. Um, and your insights into your production of the film and everything else um, and, um, and the impact it's had on all of us at LTU and uh, beyond. Um, and thank you, Lasatsi, for your contributions as well in terms of the making of the film. Um, that was absolutely great to hear and we look forward to working with you again for our future projects that we've got lined up. Um, so we've talked about the toolkit. Please get in touch with us. Um, at LTU if you would like to find out more information about the training package and uh, Rebecca in the audience um, I know you've mentioned uh, you're a staff obviously at LTU and we will be delivering more training in this area to our internal staff and myself and Rick continue to deliver to other institutions as well so please do get in touch with us if you want to find out some more. Um, I think I mentioned very briefly earlier on about the level six project that I've been involved in, which is a collation of student experiences and some staff stories in there as well. So I'm going to look at hopefully as a follow on to this, really, where we can screen that together and have some talking space and discussion as well as a follow on from this event that Shamus has um, organised so well today. Um, and without further ado, I would like to introduce Macy. Uh, Macy, you're hopefully still with us. Um, and M Macy is going to grace us with her poetry insights uh, and her wonderful poems, which are also included in my video. I've been so honoured to have those in there, Macy. Uh, so please let me hand it over to Macy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ira. Um, hi, everyone again. So I've just got two very short poems um, that I wrote last year in response to the Black Lives Matter movement and the murder of George Floyd. So this first one I wrote about George Floyd. Um, if to be black is a crime, why is your life worth more than mine? Silent too long against our protectors, protesting for the right they neglect us, whether going for a run or wearing a hoodie or sitting at home or walking down the street, Screaming, I can't breathe at the hands of police. As though being alive is committing a crime. You say all lives matter, but what about mine? So that was the first piece 
about George Floyd and then my second one is just about racism in general. Um, freedom awaits for better days to come. Tears shed for brothers and sisters fallen. Soldiers for the cause. The whole world is in mourning. Tears shed for brothers and sisters fallen. Anger rises waiting for justice. A long time coming with little change. Now we come together and take the knee. Anger rises waiting for justice. There is no justice, but just us. As history repeats, children cry in the streets. There is no justice, but just us, fighting the power of the system. The blood is on their hands. We must talk and they must listen. Um, so yeah, they're my two very, very short poems that I wrote last year for the um, Black Lives Matter movement. So I hope that you've enjoyed them um, and I hope that you enjoyed the events because I definitely did. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Macy. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you to everybody. Um, thank you to Ricardo, Sarah and Letsatsi for encouraging such an insightful and important conversation around retention um, and a special mention to Macy. Those poems were fantastic. Thank you for sharing your experiences uh, with us, with your poems and also earlier on today as well. Um, so that bring us, brings us to the end of today's event. Um, I'd like to thank our black staff and students and alumni of uh, participated in today's session and shared their lived experiences. Um, I'm sure that um, you know we'll, we'll be thinking about this for some time to come. Um, and also thank you to you, the audience, for joining us um, today uh, for some, if not all, of the sessions. Um, also, special mention um, has to go to um, uh, Shamis Maskeen. Um, operational lead for the Race Equality Charter and PhD student here at um, LTU. A big, big thank you for um, all his hard work in planning this conference. And without him, we would not have such an engaging event. Um, and it's just been so great to see so many people in engaging in each of the sessions, asking questions, listening to Black Voices. The chat has just been absolutely just phenomenal. Um, so we are going to be continuing these conversations um, in our institution. Um, and we've got some uh, upcoming race equality workshops for our staff. Uh, which will explore um, equality and inclusion um, from the perspective of race, faith and diversity. Um, and these sessions will cover key legislation, uh, tactics for exploring conversations around race, which are, I know we've been talking today, some of the challenges around that, um, and some techniques for promoting equality, tackling discrimination and fostering good relationships um, with uh, between diverse groups. Um, so I would really encourage all of our staff uh, to become to these sessions. Um, and you can do that by my view. Um, the sessions will run on the 22nd of June and also the 28th of July. Um, so um, do sign up to those. Um, and we really hope that these, uh, this conversation continues beyond this session, um, remaining at the forefront of everyone's minds and higher on the, on, on the agenda in higher education institutions and beyond. Um, you know, in terms of accountability, we are all accountable. So this should really be, um, you know, part of the work that we do and the people that we are as well. Um, we'll be sending out a short uh, post event survey uh, for you to complete and we look forward to hearing your feedback um, so thanks everybody I'm, I'm feeling very inspired by all the conversations today and I hope you are too thanks everybody thanks Madeline thanks <laughs> thanks everyone thanks Maddie thank you <laughs> Thank you all, it's been a fantastic event.